Fractions make my head hurt. I want to get rid of them as soon as possible. So the LCD of 2, 4, and 4 is 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as x squared over 4 plus 5x over 4. And this 3 over 2, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. Now we can do that as long as we multiply the same number in the numerator as the denominator. So that becomes 6 over 4. Now what I'm going to do next is write this all over as a mega fraction. I call it a mega fraction. That's not the real name. But it's x squared plus 5x plus 6 all over 4. And what I can do is I can factor out this 4 as 1 fourth. Now it becomes something we're more familiar with. So once you see this, you can then say, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to do the AC up top. And this is my A is 1, my C is 6, so 1 times 6 is 6. The denominator, or sorry, the middle term is 5, so that's going to be my B. What multiplies to give me 6 adds to give me 5. I'm going to go with the old 2, 3 combo. So I'm going to rewrite this middle term of 5x. Everything else is going to stay the same, by the way. Um, that's going to be x squared plus, okay, the 2 and the 3 is replacing that middle term, so it's a 2x plus 3x and then plus 6 at the end. Now, you know the drill. We're going to factor by grouping. We still want to keep that 1 fourth out front. I, in my youth, when I was your age, was dropping it all the time, wondering why I was uh, getting marked off. So just remember that 1 fourth is, even though it's static for the rest of this problem, you want to make sure it stays there. So what comes out of x squared plus 2x? I think an x term, and that would be x plus 2 left in parentheses. And remember, we're just going to copy that x plus 2 in the next parentheses. And the question is, what times x gives me 3x? Well, I'm thinking a 3, right? So then we continue. That would be 1 fourth times, and you know the drill here. I'm going to box these two terms, the coefficients of the parenthetical expressions. That would be x plus 3. And then the next parentheses is what's redundant there, the x plus 2. And there we have it. One of them's done. Good job. Okay, you may be like me and wanting to get rid of these fractions as soon as possible. Now, this minus 2 at the end, you could treat any integer like this as something over 1, as in this case, negative 2 over 1. So the LCD of 4, 2, and 1, in this case, again, is 4. So it's going to be 3x squared over 4 plus 5x over 2. We have to multiply this by 2 over 2 to get that 4 denominator and this 2 over 1 by 4 over 4. Now you already know that we have 4 as that denominator for this mega fraction, so it's going to be 3x squared plus 5x times 2, that's 10x, and then negative 2 times 4, that's negative 8. And then you know the next step, I'm going to, we're going to factor out that 1 fourth, so it's 1 fourth times 3x squared plus 10x minus 8, and then we can do that AC game here, like AC. And A, just so you know, is 3. C is negative 8, and B is 10, just in case you haven't watched any of the other videos and you're wondering where I'm getting these numbers from. So A times C, that product of 3, negative 8 is negative 24. And the sum is 10. That's the B value, so that's 10. And I'm thinking it's probably some kind of uh, 12, negative 2 combo. So we're just going to rewrite this middle term, this plus 10x, as 12x minus 2x. Those numbers right there. Everything else is going to remain the same. They're basically static components. So that's 3x squared. And then the minus 8. Everything else, like I said, staying still. Now you know we're going to factor out what we can of that 3x squared plus 12x, those two terms. It looks like it's not only a fraction, or sorry, not only a variable, but a number, we can factor out a 3 and an x. That becomes x plus 4. Now to be safe, we're just going to copy that x plus 4 over here. And what times x gives us negative 2x? I'm going to say it's a negative 2. So now you know we're going to keep that 1 fourth there. And then, oh, 3x minus 2, that's going to be our first parenthetical expression. And then the next one is going to be that x plus 4. You did it. Good job. Let's continue. I'm going to get rid of all that stuff. OK, now we have one where mm, it looks like we have 1x squared over 2 minus, I'm just going to write this as 1x over 1. 
and then plus 3 over 8. We want to find the LCD of 2, 1, and 8. I think that's 8. So I'm going to multiply this first term by 4 over 4 to get that 8 denominator. That would be 4x squared over 8. We know it's going to be one denominator of 8, so I'll just do that there. Um, this next term, negative uh, 1x over 1, multiply that by 8 over 8. So it would be minus 8x over, that's still 8. And then 3 8 oh, okay, that's just going to be plus 3 over 8. Now you know the next step. We're going to factor out that 8 as 1 8 Then it would be 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. And you know the AC game. What's A times C? Well, A is 4, C is 3, so A times C is 12. And then the B term, the basically middle coefficient, is negative 8. So what multiplies to give me 12, adds to give me negative 8. I'm going to go with negative 6 and negative 2. That's going to replace our middle term, that negative 8x. So again, we're going to keep that 1 8 out front. And then we have 4x squared minus 6x minus 2x plus 3. Because it's only that middle term, and I'll highlight that, that we've changed, that we've done anything to. Everything else is static so far. So as we continue, we are going to factor the first two terms. So it's still going to keep that 1 over 8 out front. And it looks like it's not only just an x term, but also a 2, because 2 goes into both 4 and 6. So once we factor out a 2x the first two terms, we have 2x minus 3. And then we want to make sure we copy that 2x minus 3 here. Sorry, I'm running out of space. But what times 2x gives me negative 2x? Yep, I heard it over the internet. Somebody said negative 1. OK, cool. And then we continue. So it's 1 8 times, OK, 2x minus 1, the first position, and then 2x minus 3. There you have it. You've done. If this helps you, feel free to like. If it doesn't help you, or even if it does, comment. If there are other types of problems you'd like me to cover, comment, and I'll try to oblige as soon as I can. Thanks, and good luck in your math endeavors. See you next time.